الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم verily all the praise is for Allah we praise him and we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness and we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions whomever Allah guides no one can misguide but whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray no one can guide I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant of Allah and his final messenger. Brothers and sisters, we are continuing with our topic of abandoning the relatives, having got diverted a little bit, but it's still a connected topic on the topic of nationalism and tribalism. Brothers and sisters, please be aware of these calamities. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that whoever calls for tribalism, whoever fights for tribalism, whoever dies for tribalism, calls and fights and dies the death of jahiliya, of ignorance. And nationalism is nothing except tribalism on a big scale. How many problems, how many disasters, how many wars, how much death and destruction and hatred has come from nationalism yet it is something that we find is being promoted and forced upon us just because for some moment in history the western world seems to have achieved some economic and material and prosperity through their industrial revolution that in the minds of some people is connected to nationalism but subhanallah even in the west my brothers and sisters they're beginning to realize the shortcomings of nationalism. Look at Europe. Now we have the European Union and they're pushing Europe towards being more and more unified and decreasing the sovereignty of independent states. Yet we Muslims, for whatever reason, we are getting more and more fanatic about our nationalism and about our nations and our states. And it, why is it always like that with us, brothers and sisters? We don't need to be like that. We are one ummah. We are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that very the believers are brothers. There was a time when we were one nation and you can travel from one end of the Muslim world to the other and you didn't need a passport each time you went and a different visa to go into each different country. These countries and these divisions and these flags and these songs and all these things, who introduced those? Where did they come from? Who carved our nation up? into lots of different pieces and divided us and had us fighting once one against the other. Well, you know, you're probably going to say it was the West. No, you know, it was us. It was us and our sins and our disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our abandoning the deen and our abandoning the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we had stuck to our deen and we had followed our religion, then there would have been no way for anyone to find a way against us to put us in that condition. So this is a product of our own sins. So let's not be distracted by this nationalism. And I am not saying that you can't love the land in which you are born, of course. And nor am I saying that you should not defend your land against aggression and tyranny and injustice and invasion. Everyone has the right to do that. But to be fanatical about some geographical area to think that you are right just because you belong to a particular country or to think you are superior because you're born in some particular land or you belong to some particular tribe, then this is ridiculous. You can't find many things further than the truth than that. And in Islam, even concerning our own relatives, our own children, our own parents, our own selves, above everything is justice. Above everything is truth. Truth and justice come above everything. And you can only achieve that by understanding and being fearful and mindful and conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from constraining and fighting and controlling your nafs, your desires, your hawa, your desires, by cleaning your heart and polishing it, and making it full of the dhikr and the remembrance and the worship of Allah and being far away from the sins which blacken the heart 
and cause it to die. So that's why we're talking about these subjects, brothers and sisters, because these sins cause death to the heart. And remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obeying Him gives life to the heart. And the best of righteousness is abandoning the sins. And abandoning your relatives is one of the great sins that we need to be careful about. And my brothers and sisters, I'm very sad to say that my 22 years now that I have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a Muslim, I have seen many examples where families, Muslim families, you find they are not talking to each other. The uncle is not talking to the niece and the nephews. The brothers and sisters, they will not talk to each other anymore. We find many divisions within families and based upon what? Oh, you didn't invite me to such and such wedding. You didn't invite my children to such and such wedding. You refused to marry your daughter to my son or vice versa. And then from these things, people refuse to talk to each other and they don't have communication with each other. Or you didn't give me this money or you didn't do this for me or you didn't do that for me. And from these things, so many problems and so many disagreements. And the fact you find that they do not even communicate with each other, they don't talk to each other. Maybe they go as far as to even writing letters or slandering or attacking or even sometimes fighting or even killing each other. And these are their own relatives. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who breaks the ties of family relationship will not enter paradise. Let's repeat that. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who always spoke the truth, who never lied, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who breaks the family ties will never enter Jannah will never enter Jannah. Brothers and sisters, do you want paradise? Do you want to go to paradise? Do you want to smell its fragrance and eat its fruits and enjoy its delights and see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't take the threat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lightly. Don't take these words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lightly. We have seen what happened to Alqama when he was unable to take shahada. We saw that in the last series, we mentioned the hadith. Because why? His mother was angry with him. How about this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? How about those verses of the Qur'an that we have been reading, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is warning us that the curse of Allah is on those people who sever the ties of relationship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, he praised those people who join the ties of relationship. And he cursed those people who break it and equated it with being wickedness on the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about in the Quran, by it he causes many to go astray. Meaning by the Quran, he actually causes many to go astray. And by the way, as a side point, brothers and sisters, Allah only causes those to go astray who seek and want and desire misguidance. If you want guidance, Allah will not misguide you. If you seek misguidance, Allah will make easy for you that path to misguidance. And so because of it, many people go astray. Those people who go astray is because they are not sincere. They do not want the truth. They do not desire to discover the truth. So what do they find in the Quran? Things that contradict their desires. Because that's what they are ruled by. Those people are ruled by their nafs. They're ruled by their desires. So when they find something that contradicts it, then that makes them upset. That makes them angry. It makes them displeased. It makes them not want to read the Quran. It makes them not want to follow the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is how they go astray. So by it, Allah causes people to go astray. Don't be surprised. People complaining about our religion. Oh, your religion says this. Oh, your religion says that. Oh, your religion teaches this and oh, your religion teaches that. Well, that they don't like it because that doesn't fit their nafs, their desires, their hawa. When Islam prohibits fornication and adultery and homosexuality 
and drinking alcohol and many acts that corrupt the spirit and the nature of the human being. This is what it is about. It's about the nature, the spirit, the soul of the human being, which is enlightened by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't like to hear those things because that contradicts their desires. It contradicts their passions. And so when they read these things, it only makes them further away from the truth. But of course, by the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also guides many people. So some, they are led astray by the Qur'an, others are guided by it. But He only makes to go astray the wicked. There you go. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He only makes to go astray the wicked. And who are those wicked people? Allah describes them. Those who break Allah's agreement after they have pledged to keep it. And sever what Allah has ordered to be joined and do wickedness on the earth. They are the losers. So, what is the pledge? The pledge, of course, is the pledge to worship Allah alone without partners. Every human being has made that pledge. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from the back of Adam, all of us, you, me, everybody, everybody was taken from the back of Adam and we were assembled before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He made us testify that He alone was the Lord, the Rabb that he alone will be worshipped. Everybody has deep within themselves this knowledge, the fitra, the nature of the human being is to acknowledge that Allah and Allah alone, he is the Lord, he is the provider, he is the creator and he is the true guide. So that is the pledge that we have all made. So the wicked are the ones who break that pledge. They turn away from that knowledge which they have within their own hearts, within their own minds that Allah has placed in there. And they sever what Allah has ordered to be joined. What has Allah ordered to be joined? It means the ties of relationship, keeping the ties of relationship and they do wickedness on the earth. So it's an understanding that breaking the ties of relationship, my brothers and sisters, is indeed a wickedness. So we go back to this saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the one who breaks the ties of family relationship will not enter the garden. I hope we've mentioned that now three or four times. I hope everybody, my brothers and sisters, if any of you are sitting here watching this program right now and you for some reason, you are not talking to your uncle, not talking to your aunt, not talking to your cousins or your nephews or your nieces, or any of your relatives, your cousins, for some reason for, from this dunya, for some reason whether it is silly or not, then what I encourage you to do right now is to pick up the phone now. Don't delay, don't wait, pick up the phone right now and phone them. Make peace between them because the mercy of Allah, the rahmah of Allah as the Prophet wasallam said, the rahmah of Allah does not come to a group of people amongst whom is sitting someone who has broken the ties of relationship. The mercy of Allah does not come to a group of people amongst whom there is someone who has broken the ties of relationship. And that is why one of the scholars of Islam, Imam Shafi, he was having a gathering and he said, if there is anyone here who has broken the ties of relationship, please leave this gathering. And in fact, one young man, he got up and he left. And he mended the ties with his uncle. For some reason, he had not spoken to his uncle. He made peace with his uncle. He came back. And he asked, why did you say that? And he said, because the Prophet ﷺ said, the mercy of Allah does not descend on a place where there is someone who has broken the ties of relationship. And I didn't want my gathering where I'm talking and teaching the knowledge to be a gathering that is free from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Look at these scholars, look at these people, look how they cared and they thought and they were concerned with such things, my brothers and sisters. So if you find there are problems in your life, if you find things are difficult, if you feel you are unhappy and you are sad and you are depressed, no wonder so many people are depressed. No wonder depression is the modern disease. They say that more people are going to be dying, dying of depression and, and diseases related to depression than almost anything else. Subhanallah, look at this. Yet these people want to think that they can teach us about how to live. Yet they are depressed. Of course they are depressed. 
because you find in many places they don't even they don't even know anymore many of them who their relatives are they don't even know who their relatives are let alone keeping ties with them so that is something very important in our religion know who your relatives are and make sure you keep ties with them and you keep contact with them now this is especially true if you are rich if you are rich and you have money then it is your duty and your obligation primarily to help your relatives who are poor and who are less well off and this hadith that we have been mentioning of the Prophet وسلم, is particularly referring to those people or that is one explanation of it those people who are rich and they do not take care of those relatives who are poor and they may even give charity they may build masjids they may help other people but they neglect their own relatives who are less well off and this is considered to be breaking the ties of relationship so if you have wealth my brothers and sisters then make sure that the first people who have a right to that wealth are those people who are closest to you in terms of relationship and of course for the husbands that is your wife and your children and your mother and your father and your grandparents and also do not please ever neglect your in-laws and how many problems I have seen and how many problems I have heard about husbands not allowing their wives to visit their in-laws and wives giving their husbands problems about their in-laws and these things part of the beauty and part of the benefit and part of the blessing of marriage is that it increases the family ties it increases the family ties and those family ties are increased in order to bring harmony and friendship and love and mercy so that we can help each other and know each other and support each other this is part of the benefit of this system and this is why all of these topics I'm talking about now are connected at the moment this is my you can say the section that I am dealing with here in the major sins is all to do with the family the family which we've already mentioned is the bedrock is the foundation of society so it's so important to keep these family ties so please brothers and sisters make sure even if you haven't spoken to your relatives for a long time ring them write them an email write them a letter send them some presents if you are rich and you are well off and I'm guessing you can't be that badly off if you're watching Peace TV which means you must have a satellite dish which means you must have a TV right it's probably an expensive TV I wonder how much you spent on that and you might have some relatives who are really in need of your help now that doesn't mean of course brothers and sisters that you don't give charity to other causes but make sure you do help your relatives and that they benefit from your wealth and they have the most right on it okay so if you have neglected your relatives brothers and sisters repent repent toba means first of all you say astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh you ask Allah to forgive you oh Allah forgive me that I have neglected this that I have because when you do something like this you are actually disobeying Allah this is something you must not forget and on top of that you are hurting your own fellow human beings and you're hurting the people who, are, who should be most close to you and those are your relatives so there are many many aspects to sins like this there are some sins that are just between you and Allah but the sins that involve depriving others of their rights can only be rectified when you restore those rights to those people you have sinned against so if you have broken the ties of relationship then you need to mend them you need to make istighfar you need to feel in your heart remorse and sadness and you need to feel the threat that Jannah may be deprived from you so you need to take the first step and subhanallah the reward for that inshallah will be so great if you take those steps so brothers and sisters this is one aspect of breaking the ties of the relationship the other aspect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said if someone has a poor relative and instead of spending on them gives charity to others his charity will not be accepted by Allah and Allah will not look at him on the day of resurrection however if he himself is poor he should keep ties with them by visiting them and keeping them informed of their situation so for the poor relatives your duty is to visit the rich relatives and to let them know not in the sense that you are begging no because you are helping 
your relative fulfill their obligation. That is it. So if you have relatives who are rich, you visit them, you talk about your condition, you are not doing it in the sense of begging, but if you don't tell them about your condition, then they will not know. You can't expect them to guess if you're in difficulty or if you're in hardship or you're doing well or not. You can't expect them to guess something like that. They will only know if you inform them. Another very important thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the one who believes in Allah and the last day must keep the ties of family relationships. So it's not only avoiding breaking the ties, also it must be a positive, proactive type of behavior where you are trying and you are making sure and you are ensuring that you keep the ties of relationship, that you are in touch constantly a lot of the time with your grandparents and of course with your uncles and your aunts, especially your maternal aunts. They have more right on you and this is something very, very important, my brothers and sisters. And I already mentioned in a previous hadith about the, one of the names of Allah is Ar-Rahim. And this name of Allah is from Ar-Rahim, which means womb. And I am the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And this is the womb, and I shall keep connection with him who keeps connected with it, and break connection with him who breaks connection with it. Bukhari collected it. It's authentic hadith where we are told the one who keeps the ties of relationship, they will be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who breaks it, they will be broken off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, it's very important to understand that really what is meant by keeping the ties of relationship does not mean when someone greets you, you greet them. When someone is nice to you, you are nice to them. I mean, you would do this with anyone more or less. I mean, these are just basic manners, basic etiquettes, basic rules of behavior. No. Keeping the ties of relationship really means, brothers and sisters, when they don't talk with you, you still talk with them. When they break off with you, you still keep contact with them. When they make diff things difficult for you, you still keep being nice to them. This is the character and the personality of the believer. This is how we should behave. This is what it means to keep ties of relationship. So brothers and sisters, do you remember we were talking about pride and how pride is a door to so many sins and how humility is the key to all virtue and it is the key to all religious virtue? Do you remember that? So you need to swallow your pride because what is stopping you doing that? The only thing that's stopping you is your pride. Brothers and sisters, all sins, however bad, however severe, Allah will forgive them. If we just repent to Allah, we ask His forgiveness, and we mend our ways and change our ways, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.